Hey everyone, welcome back to my sewing lives. Yes, I am back with Venegans after last Sunday's mishap. That was definitely a big stressor for, for me, as you probably have noticed. I was definitely banging my walls, but, uh, my head on the computer behind the scenes because I was so overwhelmed. I, I finally figured out what it was and I basically got locked out, out of my own live stream. But the good thing is that I can now see that I am live and I can also see you guys in the chat. So please say hi and where you're from. Uh, so I'm just going to read uh, your name so far in the chat. As I said, I'm very, very excited to actually be live this time. Uh, hi, India from Switzerland. We have Chantal from Canada. We have Tishuju, I think. Maybe I said that wrong. We have Rode. Hello, Johanna and everyone gathered. This is Rode from Brooklyn in New York. And oh, Tisha, you're from North Virginia in the DC metro area. And we have Stoban from Iceland. Uh, and we have Audrey from Ontario and Sunila from Switzerland. And we're AJ from New York. As usual, we have a big uh, international uh, global uh, community here that are watching these live streams. And if you've been to some of my live streams before, you know that this is very much um, a communal effort so we're basically chatting together about sewing and giving each other tips and please keep the conversation going in the chat as well because there are so many things to cover and i will try to keep up with all the comments but you know just ask away and i if i'm not able to answer i'm pretty sure someone else will be able to answer them for you so um I'm very, very happy to finally be back with the sewing live streams. I, I will just give you a short live update if you haven't watched um, the video that I published, uh, not the Sunday, this Sunday, but the Sunday before that, where I gave you an update about my life. I have moved and I also been through a divorce. Uh, so it's been a lot of uh, challenging things going on behind the scenes, which is why I've not been able to do this live streams as I normally do, because I Oh, first of all, I was very emotionally overwhelmed. And secondly, also, I was not uh, having a proper studio or a situation where I could sew or do live streams or anything like that. But now I'm actually live from a studio. <laughs> this is a very small room that I'm renting uh, a couple of minutes walk away from my new apartment. So I'm actually leaving home now to sew, which has actually been working quite well. Um, I was a little bit nervous about that because, you know, it's so so easy to have your sewing machine at home so would I actually be able to uh, be able to sew <laughs> or feel motivated but I've actually been sewing some things including this top that I'm wearing right now it's from a border style uh, issue so I'm really, really happy about that one so I've been actually sewing a couple of things in, in the weeks I've been here in the studio so that was just a brief life update we're going to talk about sewing yeast but I just wanted to give you a little bit of the backstory because if you wondered why I haven't been doing live streams, I think since, since March of um, this year. So now you know the reasoning behind that. Um, so let me see here. I'm going to try to keep, oh, you're so many people in the chat. I'm, I love that you all say hi. And it's so nice to see all you from. We have um, from Houston and we have from Sweden. We have from Kansas City, Missouri. We have Marcella from Australia. We have Heike from Eslö. Yes, fellow Swede there as well. And uh, Ruth from Central Texas. Hi, Ruth. And we have Elsa from Switzerland. We have Linda from Alabama. Sharon from Michigan. Uh, Barak de Belinda from, oh, Veronda from Israel. Oh, that's fine. I think this is the first time I've seen someone in the chat from Israel. So that's wonderful. Uh, thank you, Tishu. Sending love. It was so stressful. Yes, it's been a very stressful situation. Uh, for sure um i'm doing okay i should say that definitely but it's been it's been very emotionally challenging um uh and also alison's hi johanna sorry about the divorce been there myself yeah you'll be on the other side sorry i'm late no wonder um you know also if you're not if you're missing the chat or if you or in the live stream or if you're basically popping in later on don't worry because uh the, once the YouTube has done all the processing behind the scene, you can actually watch the replay of the live stream. I usually don't remove them unless there are any technical issues, but usually they are fine to, to do um, afterwards as well. But so today's topic is sewing jeans. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of a teaser because uh, at the end of the live stream, which will be about one hour usually, they usually run for about an hour. Um, as a last thing, I will host a little quiz, <laughs> a very short uh, sewing jeans quiz. And the winner 
of that quiz, which is the person who first answered the, the right reply the quickest in the chat, um, will get a signed copy of my book, Sewing Jeans, which was uh, published in, I think, November of last year. So thank you, everyone who's already bought this. It's been, I've been so, so well received. I'm super proud of this book. I definitely poured all my everything into this. And I, I've done three books so far. And I think, honestly, this is one I am actually the most proudest of because it was also the biggest, biggest undertaking of them all. And in case... You would prefer uh, to get your book if you win the book or if you just want to get the book in German. It's actually just recently been published in German as well. It's called Jeans Nähen. Um, so you can get this where uh, German books are sold, I think, pretty much anywhere. Uh, so you have two options now if you want to read English or if you want to read it in German, but it's the same book. So yes, now you know that. So that's what we're going to finish off today. We've done a done quiz uh, once before. It was really, really fun. So. I'm really excited to do this again. So it's going to be a jeans theme quiz there. So, so get ready for that as well at the end of this uh, stream. And uh, so, uh, and have, hi everyone else as well. There are so many people in the chat I'm trying to keep up, but I just want to say I'm so happy to see so many of you are hanging out with me today. And this is such a fun, nice way of talking sewing even though we can't be in the same room and uh, we are still able to unite, you know, uh, with this common interest. So, um, so today I'm going to talk all about sewing jeans. I'm going to share some tips, some hacks, and of course, answer your questions. And I'm pretty sure you have so many. And I, even though I've written a book about sewing jeans, I'm not sure I can answer everyone. So also, um, Please just ask away in the comment section. There are so many people, so much knowledge in, in the chat section as well. So you're going to get all the answers, I'm pretty sure, whatever you're asking. So um, so first of all, uh, this is the pair of actually behind me. You can see I, I got some stuff behind the scene here as well. So these are some of the samples I did for my book. So I'm going to go through them as well and talk a little bit about the tricks and stuff like that. Because uh, one of the things that is pretty... Um, you know, overwhelming sometimes with sewing jeans is the fact that it's quite time consuming and it's also quite, um, you know, because of all the visible stitching, you definitely want to make sure that it really looks nice and neat. So uh, I want to start off with sharing some of my favorite hacks, basically, for uh, saving time and also um, in, in the same situation, also actually improving the end result. So if you already have my book or have you watched some of my videos on the book about sewing jeans, uh, you might already be familiar with this method, but it's definitely not just for sewing jeans. And that is something that is called press template. So these are actually quite, quite common or should be more common, I think, in, in jean sewing. And what it is, is that in order to create those razor sharp back pockets like this, you know, and you want them to look exactly the same on both sides. And have you tried just pressing in the seam allowance, measuring, pressing, measuring, pressing? That's really, really difficult. And you're a very, very skilled uh, presser, I can assure you. It's definitely hard to get, you know, all the seam allowance exactly the same, folded in with those razor sharp corners. And with jeans, it's definitely, you want them to look really, really nice. Uh, so what you do is that you actually wrap the, you cut out, let me see if I can explain this now, because I'm a little bit rusty with the live streams. Uh, what you do is that you cut out a piece of um, the finished pocket without the seam allowance, and you pay, place that on some hard, firm um, uh, paper. It could be like a back of a pizza box or a cereal box. You don't have to go out and buy some fancy paper. I usually just uh, shift through my recycle bin when I want to create a new press template. So what you do is basically is that you just press around the seam allowance all the way around. And of course, up here you fold them twice. And that means that you will get such crisp pockets. It's like magic. And you can use this for even if you want to sew um, patch pocket on knits, which again, big struggle, right? You can use these press templates and it's like magic. I don't know if someone knows in the chat why it is, is this the, um, uh, the starch in the paper? Because when you press it and you mix it with the starch, it gets almost like, you know, you would use like a spray starch, which is also a good trick, 
tip, sewing tip. I wonder, and now I'm just guessing, <laughs> so I'm probably, you know, just talking out of nowhere here, but if you have know if that could be the reason that the fact that there is some starch in paper and that when that when you mix that with heat and perhaps a little bit of a steam, um, it will actually fixate the um, fabric. I'm, I'm just thinking, as I said, I should have researched this, but but it works so well. So um, I'm going to show you here. So here's a, a sample that I did for the book. Um, so you can see here these these pockets. Let me see. I can put it up oh. So when when they are this round, you know, it's also really really hard to shape a, such a round. But I used the, but I used the press template, as you can see. Hopefully they're very light, <laughs> but hopefully you can see how nice and even. You see that little tiny tip, and that was because I used, you know, a shape press template like this, and also, as a bonus, in my book, Sewing Jeans, you can actually um, download a PDF kit where you can print out both the uh, various back pocket pan pattern back back pocket patterns and the corresponding uh, press template, so you don't actually have to uh, cut away yourself. So you have this option. That's just my a really good tip. Um, you can actually use this for so many things. I, I should have prepped better, but I'm going to show you another tip and I'm going to really pour you of explaining it. But um, if you want to fold something uh, really, really sharply, like a seam allowance, for instance, when you're sewing a waistband, which again, kind of tricky, right? Um, what you do is that you can actually draw a straight line on the same type of firm paper like this. Uh, which the seam allowance is, you know, like one centimeters or half an inch or whatever measurement system you're using. You just draw that line and then you fold the fabric against the paper edge and then you get a really, really crisp, sharp fold. And I use this for so much. And that's also a tip which I actually don't mention in the book um, when it comes to sewing really razor sharp uh, waistbands. I'm going to show some other tricks also, but i get to that in a bit, but um, that is, as I said, a real game changer. And I don't say that lightly. <laughs> I, I, I'm sometimes a bit wary of all the sewing hacks, but this one is actually really, really, really efficient and a no-brainer. Plus, it costs, costs no money. It's cheap. It's free, basically, just your time. Um, so, speaking of the paper theory and why it fixates this fabric, we do have some people in the chat now so i'm going to see what you're saying about that um uh let me see here uh yeah tisha says i think it may be because the paper kind of bounces the steam back to the fabric and that sounds like a really good suggestion because i mean obviously there must be some you know, really release because when you you mix the heat or the water, you know th there will be some sort of um, movement of the starch. It may be like in in fumes or I'm I'm using the wrong words now. You should also, I'm, as most of you know, I'm from Sweden and I'm a little bit rusty now as well because I haven't done the live stream. So you will also have some fun fun with me in English. Um, and Sunila also says I was thinking about the same lines. The heat could also be a factor. Heating the paper presses the fabric from behind. Yeah, so that's probably. I definitely think there is a uh, a chemical um, chemical explanation as well. I, I definitely think it's it's just isn't the paper because uh, I don't I don't experience the same thing. For instance, I have some metal rulers that I also use for pressing, and while they're also really awesome, um, I don't experience the same type of firm fold as I do with the paper. Uh, so yeah, it definitely, to, in my my mind, it definitely thinks that it's some, there's must be some some magic in the paper. Um, and uh, we also had uh, Ruth said she was she has my book, but she's a little bit uh, intimidated about sewing jeans. And, and Ruth has a great suggestion: get the ginger jeans pattern from Closet Core. I was of jeans. I was afraid of jeans making two. I have made over seven pairs now, and I could do it in a day from start to finish. Practice help. Words of wisdom, definitely water, because it is it is a little bit intimidating, and I don't think 
no one made a perfect pair of jeans the first time and don't feel uh, overwhelmed by that. But there are so many good resources out there today, uh, apart from my book and the videos that I also have on this YouTube channel. There are tons of really, really good sewing tutorials online that you can find. Um, Rhoda mentioned Closet uh, Core, and she has created a really wonderful resource library as well. And I also know that her sewing instructions are really detailed. So definitely, if you want to do your first pair, it's good to have good reasons, my book, or, or pick a pattern that has really good instructions, because that definitely helps. And of course, you know, we live and we learn, right? So we, we, we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. Um, I also, I also try to uh, remind myself because I'm a bit of perfectionist, but I also want to share this um, advice to you guys. Uh, when I um, did research for my book, uh, I interviewed a guy who is uh, working in the jeans manufacturing uh, um, industry. And he said that <laughs> a few years back, he had tried to persuade a factory uh, to start creating uh, jeans that look hand sewn because he felt that there was a bit too much um, perfectionism in the jeans garment industry and he actually felt that people would, would be more appreciative um, with jeans that had that kind of like a more crafted hand sewn look so he was like uh, when I when I talked to him he was like he wanted me to pass this advice on that you know to him as a really like a jeans um, uh, appreciator he actually uh, likes to see um, jeans that has a little bit of a rough stitching and where the, the stitching isn't 100% even and evenly spaced because he felt that that brought um, handmade crafted value to his jeans so I, I try to remind myself of that and I also want to share that advice to you guys now of course my book is very much about how you know to really level up your skills but but we should be kind to ourselves as well when it comes to that. So, and we have more people also um, uh, saying the praises of uh, ginger jeans. I think that's a great introduction. It's a it's a female jeans pattern. I know there are uh, guys also watching this um, live stream, but I can definitely recommend that. And I have I have it, but I haven't tried it yet. But I'm definitely going to do that because I actually bought some really. Um, now I stretched denim uh, earlier this year, so I actually plan to do that on my uh, as soon as I get to it. Yes, and also funny because now uh, I was like, I I wonder, would love to hear your take on that because I know uh, some of you are also um, part of how shall we say it? You know, we've been we have been around the blocks for a few years, and if you probably noticed that a lot of young people, including my daughters, they are now not wearing uh, skinny stretch jeans. They are definitely wearing mom mom and pop jeans you know with a high waist <laughs> and the wide leggings with very minimal stretch so i'm actually thinking maybe i should jump on that bandwagon or or maybe i was you know still having some <laughs> remissions from the 80s so I'm, I'm sort of not really uh ready for that look so i would love to hear your thoughts about that if you are um what's your thoughts about you know the the trendy jeans of today which are definitely not the stove pipe skinny ones but uh very classic jeans with a high waist and all the stuff that you know we moved away from uh during the 90s and the 80s so yeah it's definitely a style change so <laughs> i'm not sure in which direction i'm going to go for my next pair but i'd love to hear your thoughts about that um uh, and also um i'm going to see if i try to get uh with the chap yes um And uh, let me see here. And May says, so my second ginger jeans, it got easier the more I make it for sure, for sure. Um, let me see here. And so also says, speaking of the, you know, the handmade look, I, I like things to look handmade. My sheet wouldn't be up for it, but I really want to try and make jeans. Yeah. Yes, that is definitely one of the challenges when you are sewing jeans uh, on domestic sewing machines, because, you know, at the end of the day, they are not as strong as the industrial machines, but you can, if you get a sturdy machine or an older machine, in my case, I'm just gonna uh, flip the camera now so we can see if I can, I can move the tripod around here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's my sewing machine. It's, it's a sturdy workhorse. It's definitely, um, it was a fancy machine, I think, when it was released. 
uh, in the late 80s, but it's a Bernina 1230. And what I want to say is that, you know, you can also invest in a good, solid, older machine because, uh, again, I am <laughs> not basing this on much more than my own experience, but I find that uh, a lot of the older, you know, more like cast iron based sewing machines, even in they are fairly cheap if you buy them used, they're actually really good when it comes to top stitching, actually quite, you know, heavy layers of denim. I've, I, that's my personal experience. Uh, I have actually never owned <laughs> no new sewing machine. So maybe I'm biased in that sense, but um, both this one and uh, before that I have um, I had the Husqvarna Viking. Uh, or Wiki, as we say in Swedish, uh, 2000, which is from the 70s. And that was also really good for sewing denim. So in my experience, um, might be worth checking out if you don't already have um, a vintage sewing machine. I could be wrong, but I'd love to hear your tips when it comes to uh, modern sewing machines. If there are particular brands or um, models that you find are really good with those thicker fabrics. Um... Uh, yes, there are some also mentions here. Yes, India says, I, I got a Bernina. I'm putting my money on it, getting through all those layers, hopefully without my fingers in a way. Yeah, for sure. And also there are ways, um, you know, which I talk about in my book as well, you know, how to uh, get over all those heavy layers. There are some strategies for that as well and getting tension right. You can actually use a hammer or a rubber mallet to just hammer down, getting it flat, uh, adjusting stitch length, all the kind of stuff just to make sure and use, of course, a hump jumper or a height uh, level tool uh, or dynamic. There are lots of different ways, actually, where you can kind of like supercharge your regular sewing machine if you know the tricks to use it for sure. Um, and did you say I saw an older singer from the 70s at the thrift store? I should have personally it's gone. Yeah, I actually think that some of these older machines are quite attractive. Um, the first one I had also was a singer from the 60s, and it was really, really good as well. Um, Yes, we got a little bit off track like we always do in this uh, sewing live streams. That's why I love chatting with you. Um, so, and again, another tip uh, that I want to give you is that, um, which I also think is a good way to reuse, you don't have to reinvent everything all the <laughs> So what I have always is that I have this, this is a um, top stitching template. So, you know, every time you're doing a top stitching situation, you don't have to, if you, even if you're using a new pattern, you don't really have to um, do the this again. So what you do is that you have one of those, you can have um, different width, for instance, and you just place that on the button fly uh, or the zipper fly. And then you just either just trace around the first row. And then of course you just use the edge of your presser foot to sew either inside or outside, depending on what type of, um, uh, how widely spaced you want the zip fly to be. Uh, you can also actually, which I got a tip, uh, which I also show in the book, which is something I learned from, from you uh, guys, is that you can also um, actually, you know, use some adhesive with double-sided tape and just place that around and just sew around this instead of tracing, because you don't have to trace, you just place this actual template on the fabric. Uh, let me see if I can demo this, because I do have some samples that I did for the book. Um, there you go. So, so what you do is that you just actually stick that and some people, which, uh, uh, the tip that I got, which I haven't tried <laughs> myself is to use, um, is it called sanding paper? You know, the kind of coarse paper they use to, uh, make, uh, wood soft. So you can actually, and this is again, a hack that I haven't tried, but I, I've seen many people swear by it. Um, because of the coarse surface of that paper, you will actually be able to get it to stick to the fabric. And then you can just either trace around or stitch around. So I find that really intriguing. So I'm definitely gonna try this. Uh, so there are lots of things actually in, already in our household that we can use for sewing jeans. Um, Uh, and also we have more machines shout outs here, a uh, big machine, uh, Camilla says a big machine like my Fuff expression has no problem with denim, at least eight layer work fine. Well, that's all you need probably, um, for 
you know, and also a lot of the denim that we can get as home sews are usually a little bit uh, thinner. So again, it's usually true if you have a good sewing machine. So thank you for that recommendation. Uh, Stubborn has, I have an older Husqvarna and have no problem with thick materials. And yes, and sanding paper says Sunila. So that's really good to know. Uh, and we also have some really interesting perspective here from, um, from a former citizens of uh, Russia. Uh, Vita says, uh, for former citizens uh, of the USSR, jeans born in the 60s and 70s are like a sim symbol of freedom and then clothes, Ukraine. Uh, now we have khaki color symbol of freedom, which, um, yeah. So basically clothes can be like an expression. I think that was very much like a teenage fashion as well uh, with jeans, um, that it was a way of like a liberation. Now, of course, it's everyone's wear because it became first work wear and then it became like an expression of um, uh, like the teenager and the like the young people. And so it's very, jeans and denim has a very rich history, which is, keep going basically and just have different forms and as you can say it can also be a signifier of uh, um, rebellion or so it's definitely a very rich history uh, and we also have another shout out for sewing machines i love my who's corner viking automatic i have three and i adore every one uh, so let me see here uh Camille asks, what fabric weight do you recommend? I definitely think it depends on what type of jeans you want to sew because if you want to sew um like uh, stretch jeans, which is more almost like leggings with a high amount of stretch, you can go lighter. But if you want to have, as we talked about uh, earlier, the more classic straight leg jeans uh with little stretch, uh you definitely should at least go for uh 10 ounces. Um I, I, I don't have the conversion in my head uh, of the square meters. Uh, sorry about that because, but you can check in my book and where you can see, but, but basically at least uh, 10 ounces and you can see the most um, denim brands um, list their jeans. You should probably go between 10, maybe up to 12. Around 12, it start to feel a little bit stiff. Uh, if you're going for maybe sometimes in, in a fabric shop, you can see um, jeans label as six or six or seven you should be aware that that is probably a bit thinner than the similar stretch denim that you would find in uh, regular uh, sewing uh, regular jeans uh, that you buy in a store uh, and to me the drawback of having a really thin denim is that first of all if you're doing really skinny it might might not like cover it doesn't get the same type of shaping it feels a little bit thin a little bit not flimsy is not the right word but it doesn't have that kind of stability and sturdiness. And secondly, of course, also, um, if you're using quite um, lightweight denim, uh, it will also be a little bit harder to get all the shaping right, you know, in terms of top stitching, uh, the pockets and stuff like that. So it's good to pick a denim that has some type of um, stability for sure. Um, so that's my recommendation. And Cassie also said, do you have a pattern that you recommend? I've actually, I, I usually draw all my own sewing patterns, but what I want to share with you now is that I have uh, on the, um, let me see here if I can share this, share screen. If you go to my, so if you go to my, uh, see, my website, thelastitch.com uh, dash sewing jeans, uh, it's actually, I have this really, really big resource that I think could be interesting to, uh, to, to share with you. Um, so of course here I collect a lot of tutorials and to answer your questions, I also have this page, which is a big list of jeans sewing pattern. And it really, it really is a very big list. So it has, um, it has so many jeans sewing patterns as you can see here uh ginger jeans uh it has uh, men's jeans female jeans sorry it's a bit slow to load because i'm doing this actually on a on a mobile phone but you can see here and we also have um uh different uh sizes and everything like that so there's a lot of uh, a big list there sorry i don't know why it's so slow but 
but you, you get the gist here. Um, so if you head over to dlastage.com, sewing jeans, you can find uh, an immense resource with jeans for all types of shapes, uh, all types of sizes, all type of styles. So I definitely recommend that you go over there and check that out as well to figure out. And of course, also check the reviews. I'm a big fan of using um, uh, Pattern Review, uh, patternreview.com. They have uh, tons of reviews on jeans, sewing pattern there as well. Uh, I used to review a ton there too, and I, I think I reviewed a couple of jeans pattern there as well, if memory serves me right, but that was probably a while ago. I joined there in 2003, so it's been a while. Uh, yes. Um, so, um, yes, that was jeans pattern. So, um, another time saving trick that was definitely something that I, it took me a long time to figure out, uh, but this has been immensely value. And, and as we probably we know that in the garment industry, you know, time is a big factor to cut down production costs. So uh, that is true for jeans as well, which takes a lot of time, even in, even in like an assembly line, there's a lot of steps, even though uh, a lot of things are automated, but what they do is that they, top stitch a lot of things in one continuous sequence. So if you um, have checked out my video uh, in on YouTube about how to sew uh, jeans zip fly, you can see this uh, in action. Of course, I also show this in many different ways in my book, but that is to sew a top stitch in one continuous sequence. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of that now. So for instance, if we're going to go back to the back pockets, let me see here. Um, so what you do is that, of course, this, you know, the, the pocket opening, you will, of course, uh, stitch first before you attach the jeans to the, the back. But then you start, um, you start here and then you sew along the line like this. And then you pivot and then you stitch the inner line like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, do, 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 then, and then you overlap here and then you secure. Of course, you can also do additional tacking just to make sure that it's secure or use rivets, but that is the gist of it. And that you can also do that. Um, of course, now the jeans are so light. I wish I could uh, do a better job of demonstrating it. Let me see if you can see, but here you can see, uh, in this case, the stitching isn't evenly spaced. So uh, at the corner here, I'm actually doing a pivot. So this one is very close to the edge, but this one is, you know, a bit diagonal like this, if you can see. Uh, again, I sew this in a sequence. I just uh, drafted, you know, I traced the line with chalk here. So I, I knew how to sew. So I didn't stop and start again. I just sew the entire back pocket in one sequence, which also it makes the pocket much more durable because you're not stopping and starting all the time. So you can actually, what I'm trying to say is that even if you want to like do asymmetrical top stitching, uh, you can definitely do that as well using this sequence method. Just remember to uh, to secure the thread properly. And of course, uh, ideally back stitch as well, because you know, this will be an area, um, do bar tax, I mean, uh, or um, a rivet, because this of course is an area of high stretch. I think you can see a little bit better on this side. Um, here you can see, you see, there's quite a lot of distance here, but that is all still sewn in one sequence. I hope that made sense. <laughs> Anyways, you can also check out my video uh, on how to stitch back pockets where I show this. Uh, you can use the same uh, principle when you're doing the uh, this key pocket or ticket pocket. Uh, it's the same thing. You don't stop, you just stitch the entire um, pocket uh, at, in one sequence uh, and again when you're doing uh, flies like this stitching so what, oh, sorry <laughs> I'm working a bit left to right you know I, I can't tell left from right and I can't obviously do a mirror thing as well so what you do is that when you do this um, this sequence okay here you go uh, you start here uh, if you use the method that I show in my, if my, the professional method I show in my book, and also I have a tutorial here on YouTube for that as well. Uh, so what you do is that you, 
you just stitch here you do it all the way here pivot you don't stop just pivot and then using the edge of the press foot as your guide or just your eye if you create a good gauging i'm not uh, and then you just stitch the second row and you can actually finish off by pivoting again and just um, stitching over that first row and then again you have a super secure seam and no stopping no starting uh, big time saver less hassle you know less risk for thread jamming and all that stuff so uh, if you're using the professional method which i all share in my book there are lots of different ways of of doing this kind of sequence sewing as i'm talking about now so i just again like those small hacks that can actually make oh yeah oh it isn't that difficult you know so i think that's really good to uh, which was one of the purpose of my book sewing jeans is basically as i said why i um, turned to the to garment industry professionals to get some uh, insight because i felt that uh, something i'm very passionate about is basically to merge um, you know, us home so is with professional manufacturing method and see if we can find like a sweet spot because I think we have a lot to learn as well because sometimes in, in sewing books and uh, sometimes in sewing patterns as well the methods aren't always um, ideal for um, you know, they are overly complicated and it's actually harder to get right whereas a lot of uh, techniques in the garment industry is designed uh, to be very accurate because you have to keep training people to do this. So that's why I'm a big fan of um, of using this type of techniques, especially for top stitching, as I said, sewing in a in a sequence. Uh, let me see here. Um, I'm going to try to keep up with the chat now. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yes, any suggestions on how to attach rivets? It can't seem to install them properly. Yes, um, and Songbird says that get a snap for river press something similar. Definitely, um, there are some some uh, not as I have um, like a, a more simple pressing tool uh, that you can buy for home sewers, but you can also get like a professional uh, press tool. The only thing you need to remember, of course, is that you need to get. Um, now I'm going to see if I get this right in English. Uh, the dies uh, or the uh, the shape. So, for instance, each rivet uh, or each button has its own di dimension. So, you definitely need to use like um, a template where you attach the, the rivet that actually fits that if you're going to use some type of press machine. You can also, of course, use a hammer. And if you buy, you know, um, snaps and rivets from um, like uh, domestic uh, home sewing companies, uh, they are sometimes also included. A kind of like a set where you have that uh, the dies and, and 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 the all the tools that you need to just get a very precise like but still it takes a little bit of practice for sure uh it's not not 100 percent easy I, I totally agree um and uh, miranda says i have never sewn a pair of jeans but i want to however i'm so afraid that if i start the jeans will not fit or be uncomfortable any advice well my, my number one advice, first of all, uh, check your wardrobe because in many cases we do have at least some pairs of trousers or pants that we actually find uh, fits okay, uh, at least in certain parts of the body. And I am a big believer in actually, you know, starting what you already know works. So don't expect uh, a sewing pattern uh, to fit you from the start because we all have very unique bodies and no pattern cre creator are able to read our particularly unique minds. So I definitely think it's a good idea um, to start with that and just measure everything, you know, measure uh, the crotch length. Uh, so you know that if you want to have a pair of jeans that it will uh, hit at the same, same area. Some people, you know, like high waisted jeans, some people like low waisted jeans. Uh, and then when you, when you, and then of course the waistband, is it curved or is it straight? And of course the width around the hip area, uh, so forth and so forth. And then when you have kind of figure out, like do all the measurements it's, and kind of made this analyze, uh, then you go and look for jeans sewing patterns that have similar properties. So as I said, um, with the links down here, the last stitch sewing jeans link, uh, if you go there, you will find a big, big list of jeans sewing patterns where you can get tons of different um, 
ideas uh, on, so you'll probably be able to find something similar. So that's my number one tip. I also have in my book some suggestions for how to alter jeans, uh, the jeans pattern to make it fit. And I should also plug a book. I think it will be out because there are actually another jeans book coming out now from Palmer Pledge, uh, the, um, the brand that published a lot of books on uh, fitting pattern. They're actually coming out with a book on how to fit jeans. Uh, I know uh, maybe this fall, I think, maybe October or something like that. Uh, the name ex escapes me now, but that could also be a good resource to check out. Um, and of course, also, um, if your stretch denim is also much more forgiving. Um, so that's also a really good start. And I think you don't have to use a ton of stretch, but just at least a couple of percentage, at least. That will also be much more forgiving, especially when you're moving around and, and stuff like that. So uh, let me see here. And also, Rod has also advice to Miranda and everyone else who's thinking about jeans but feel a bit over, uh, a bit intimidated by it all. Um, Rod says, I was shocked at how well the ginger jeans fit me with very minimal alteration. And I have a very difficult, uh, I guess, body, uh, to fit lower body. Just go for it. If nothing else, you learn what doesn't work. Very, very true. And again, I said, I don't think we should expect that our first pair of jeans or our first pair of pants will be uh, the most amazing thing ever because <laughs> it's a learning process. And I can assure that uh, the first pair of jeans I made didn't, you know, live up to all my expectations. But, you know, I, I kept going and I learned along the way. And I think now I'm pretty, pretty good at, you know, uh, gauging how to adjust jeans depending on different fabrics and stuff like that so um, and Brenda asks uh, do you talk about sizing issue for men's jeans I have been trying to make jeans for my teenage I don't talk about sizing per se but I do talk about pattern alterations and my book is very um, gender neutral so the instructions are very much um, applicable to anyone uh so uh, yeah uh let me see here um and burke says the dress in the background is very nice is that your own pattern yes it, it's uh sorry <laughs> it's it's actually a, a pattern hack uh i did a video many years ago where i was basically trying to copy um uh, diane from first uh wrap dress uh so i basically it's very it's very crafted basically it's a lot of detailing in it goes inside uh so yeah it, it was a mix of two different patterns and a lot of my own alterations as well i love it so much I, I wanted to add a bit of color in my sewing studio so i figured i could i could dress up my dress dummy with that one so if you go way way behind it's probably not the best quality video i've ever done but it's it's a journey you could say that <laughs> so it's somewhere deep down in the youtube archives you can you can see that uh Uh, yes, yeah, so Nordi says, of course, um, uh, that, about speaking about, you know, doing jeans. Jeans is quite expensive and making jeans is a big job. So after making them, they aren't wearable. It seems such a waste. True. But as I said, I think uh, one of the mistakes that I did uh, for a long time in my own sewing journey was that I made a lot of um, assumptions instead of actually doing the research. So in my case, I just dived into a pattern, just assuming that it would fit me. Uh, and I didn't really consider if that was a, if I picked the right type of fabric, if the pattern was actually drafted for my body type, check the measurements in the sizing. Uh, so I actually think that a lot of um, waste can be prevented if we do a lot of research beforehand. But if you if you're that can if you are, if you feel that way, which I can totally relate to, and I am the same way, jeans, good quality denim fabrics, it's expensive, and um, I would definitely, as I said, recommend that you really do your research, measure all the jeans, you know, go in stores and check details and stuff like that. You know, I am guilty of uh, going to a store, bringing my own measuring tape, <laughs> going into the changing room try on a bunch of stuff and then measure them and see <laughs> what I like. And then <laughs> I write that down in my, in my mobile phone or my cell phone. Uh, and uh, so that's how I do research. And that's actually also um, 
how I created this dress. I was actually uh, at the fancy store in my hometown uh, trying out a uh, proper uh, Diane from, from Furstenberg uh, wrap dresses and just uh, examining them and measuring them in the, in the changing room. So yes, confession. I hope I hope, don't hope any uh, brands are here, but yeah, that's that's how I do it. So as I said, don't be afraid to do a lot of research before you're doing your first pair if, if you want to make sure you don't get disappointed. But, you know, we all have have to do some type of mistakes. That's, that's how we learn. I, I don't think any one of us has has 100% success rate when it comes to sewing. So it's a bit of a journey as well. But yeah, we definitely want to be uh, considerate about, you know, not being wasteful. Uh... Um, and Sydney also, which country are you from and how long have you been sewing them? I'm from Sweden, which is actually um, a country with the has quite a lot of uh, denim manufacturers, uh, not factories so much anymore, but a lot of denim brands, yes. Um, I, I think I first, I think I saw, made my first pair of jeans about 25 years ago. Uh, they were not a great success because also back then a lot of denim that you can buy uh, in regular stores it was not very good. It looked very home sewn and you know the washes and everything. You know, I did so many mistakes. One of my biggest mistake, uh, which I learned the hard way, which I also share in my book, and I, I know you already are familiar with that, is that um, you know when you look at jeans, you see that they have this nice heavy thread, of course, and the top stitching both on the right side and the wrong side. But if you put like um, this case, um, heavy uh, top stitching thread in the bobbin uh, on a regular sewing machine without doing some type of adjustment or tension in the bobbin, you will nine, time, nine times out of 10 end up with a horrible mess, tangled threads, uneven tension. It's just gonna ruin a lot of stuff. So that was one of the mistakes that I did. I don't honestly think uh, a lot of people um, do that anymore uh, because I think because of the internet there's so much more knowledge but when I began sewing in the 80s you know there was not much um, resource you could go to the library or the bookstore to buy a sewing book and at least here in Sweden it was like literally three or four sewing books to to pick from <laughs> during my entire like first 10 years of sewing so um that's that's also but just just one of those like mistakes that I did in my early jean sewing <laughs> career so to speak uh... and yes we do have some um, uh, some people also you know uh, being uh, encompassing that idea of going to the changing room so Amy says that's a wonderful idea measure ready to wear in the changing room yes we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna create a mass movement I probably feel <laughs> don't come for me if this is a terrible advice I'm sorry <laughs> but you know this stays this stays within this live stream right <laughs> and uh, we have a fellow uh, changing room measuring here YBA he says I also love bringing my measure uh, um, tape to Sara fitting rooms that's a good idea um Kathleen said it's very funny but very creative you can see what you like and dislike uh on ready to wear in stores yeah because you know we have a lot of things to learn and and you know that's a good thing about ready to wear because you can try out so many things and different sizes because you know when you're sewing uh you kind of work from the dark at least if that you're trying a new type of style that you haven't done before it's different of course if you're doing another um blouse using the same type of pattern but of course and we're trying to do something very different um, uh, and we have Adam here yes yes let me see here uh, yes also there were some questions about my um, this wrap dress vlog <laughs> so uh, which I actually show some of the pressing tips where I talked about earlier in this video so uh, it's um, it's called um, let me see here uh, can find it deep down in the in the archives uh, mary says how to sew a design a wrap the dress inspired by dvf yes that's that's the one <laughs> uh, and we have also uh, read uh, paraplus has also done what i have done having the right thread and needles makes a huge difference i have made the mistake of putting heavy thread in the bobbin too thank you so much i <laughs> i always feel like 
<laughs> That's why I love doing these kind of professional videos because even though I like to share um, my sewing knowledge, it's also I think it's important that you know I am very transparent <laughs> about the fact that a lot of the stuff that I now um, teach is also what I learned myself the hard way and through others as well. You know, we're learning from each other here, so it's definitely like a con continuous um, learning process for sure. Um, also, yeah, definitely get good needles because um, especially if you're stitching through a lot of layers. Um, my favorite brand, uh, I'm not sponsored, but <laughs> oops, uh, I keep mentioning them, but I do think that uh, the Schmetz brand, I think it's readily available in a lot of different countries around the world. They have really good, very durable jeans needles. Of course, they can break, but they are very sturdy. I love using these. And also because at least uh, for me, uh, as you probably noticed in the last few years, I've been wearing more and more glasses because my eyesight is down the drain. It's, I cannot see anything close up anymore. Uh, so it's extra helpful to actually use the, um, let me see, the Schmetz. Um, sorry, it's too glaring. Um, it's, it, I do have some light because it's getting dark now here in Sweden. But the Schmetz also have a top stitching brand, a top stitching model. Um, that goes up to 110, I think, awesome. And the, it's also designed to use for heavy thread and to, to bring these glasses to needle full circle is that they have an extra large eye. So I don't need to have my magnifying lamp and my extra enlarging glasses uh, to, um, to thread. So again, the Schmetz uh, top stitch. I, I don't know if any other. I also use um, Organ because I want to give a shout out as well. Organ has a good quality needles. I sometimes also use the Gross Becket, but I'm not. Haven't been not been as happy with those. Sorry about the glaring. I, I, I understand that you cannot see it. Um, yeah, the Gross uh, Becket is also another brand that does needles. And please also share some other recommendations if there's something you think are good and not good. But I would say that generally speaking, Schmetz has not disappointed. So that's what I use mostly. Um, and we have more people arriving. So, uh, so nice to see you just come and pop in. Uh, if you are coming late, as I said earlier as well, that once YouTube has you know, done some magic processing, you will be able to just go back to my channel and see the live stream as a replay. I, I'm not sure um, how long it takes. Sometimes it's from, you know, right away or something a bit later so you can just go back if you want to see what you missed um so and we also have a question from brenda about flat felling seams on jeans yes that's an awesome question and something i actually wanted to talk about today because time has flown as it does on these live streams um so i'm gonna pick up i'm gonna pick up uh so it's going to talk a little bit about flat felling. Yes, flat felling. In my book, Sewing Jeans, shameless plug, uh, I show two different methods of doing flat fell seam. Uh, in the garment industry, they use a special folding machine, like so it basically overlaps. Uh, and that is, of course, not something that we have access to uh, at home. Uh, so I'm going to go on a little bit of tangent now, but I'm going to bring it all back. So. As most sewing machine brands will have uh, some type of flat felling seam, that you can, it's probably not a clue, you have to buy it separately. And those can be good if you want to sew shirts. They can be used for sewing jeans. And in, in the book, I show this method, but I do have some uh, caveats that I want to share with you in case you're thinking about investing in one of those. Um, is the fact that because of, of the folding techniques for using flat felling seam means that um, the, the rows, the first and the second row will not be sewn with the same, um, they will not be sewn with the needle thread. So one row will be sewn uh, with the bobbin thread and one row will be sewn with a needle thread. And what that means is of course, first of all, sometimes it's hard to get the tension right. And secondly, to bring back the point that you usually cannot use heavy thread in the bobbin on a regular sewing machine that we have. That means that you cannot use heavy top stitching thread for that flat felling uh, foot. So 
of course, be informed. You can definitely try it. And uh, there are lots of video tutorials out there. And I also show how to do it in my book. Um, also, you can buy different ways. It, get, it becomes a little, it's a little bit more narrow. This is a sample uh, of the, the flat, the, 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 um, the press of foot flat felt seam. Sorry, that's how it looks. Uh, so uh, there you go. So what I did, so I just put my thinking hat on and uh, tried to figure out how could we mimic the flat felt um, seams in the garment industry using just a regular sewing machine. So what I show in my book is that instead uh, you use um, different seam allowance on the right and the left piece because you're doing an overlap. And then just if you haven't checked my book, you I show how to um, uh, sew stitching lines like folding lines and how to do that like a step by step folding technique and good places to do flat felt seams is um, the back crotch. For instance, because a nice thing about flat felt seam obviously is that they don't really rub. So here is a pair of jeans that I made. So let's see. I'm sorry about the lie today. It just isn't. It isn't very cooperative. Uh, oh, it's always a lighting issue. Let me see here if this, yeah. So here is here is the flat felt seam uh, in the back crotch, and this is how it looks on the. Uh, <laughs> this is how it looks on the outside. I, I get so confused by the left and right here. Sorry. This is how it looks. So as you can see here, I've been using regular top stitching thread. Um, so that's one area. Uh, very commonly in the garment industry as well is to use uh, the flat felling technique also from another piece uh, at the back, which is the joke, using a flat fell there as well. Um, you can also use uh, the flat felled seam for the in seams, the inner seam of the legs, because again, again, it's a way to minimize chafing. Um, so those are probably the ones that are the most common. Uh, usually on most jeans, uh, you tend to have the seam uh, pressed open on the outer seam. So uh, I would say then to sum it up, um, to answer your question in a very long winded way, uh, the back crotch, the yoke and the inner seam. Those are probably the three, three like common areas to do a flat fell seam. And, um, I, I, I make the argument at least that, you know, uh, the method I show in my book <laughs> is definitely uh, very um, uh, fail proof. It's a very accurate way of doing it. So even if you haven't done a flat felt seam before, you can actually get your root pretty good. Uh, I can assure you that uh, if you do this the manual way. Uh... And we also, let me see, I'm going to keep up with the chat now. Um, we're going to run a few more minutes now talking about jeans. And then we're going to do the quiz. So just stay tuned now. And in about four or five minutes, we're going to do the quiz when you can get a signed copy of my book. So I'm just going to run through that. Um, let me see here. We also have another brand suggestions. Nancy said we can get Asker's needles in Oklahoma. You say, okay, that's a good tip. Thank you. Um, and we have many people who say Banina is a really good machine for heavy, all the ones at least. Uh, Mitchell is having an old pair of jeans, a uh, pair of Le Levis, that she wants to keep because they fit so well. So that's very good, you know, even though they are falling to pieces, keep them because they have a lot of information. Amy says, I purchased your sewing jeans book and mastered the cover stitch ma uh, machine and sewing activity. Thank you so much, Amy. They're wonderful, very easy. Uh, comprehensive and easily understood. Thank you so much. That means a lot to hear. Thank you. Um, and as also says, what stitch lengths do you use for top stitching? Well, it, it depends a little bit because also it depends on the thickness of the fabric, but I would guess roughly uh, at least three up to four. Uh, of course, some areas will, you know, it will uh, feed, uh, uh, you know, uh, the feeding will, so the stitching will be kind of small. You definitely need to experiment. So, for instance, if you so stop stitching over a lot of thick layers, your stitch lengths will look a little bit shorter. So, you might need to increase it. I usually don't go over four because that kind of 
mess with the tension and it doesn't look as good. Uh, you know, you, you can't see the clear stitches. Uh, by the way, another plug for a video that I did quite recently is uh, a top stitching tip video where I show um, some suggestions on how to top stitch and different stitch lengths for different materials. So that's a really good resource and tension and all that stuff. Uh, Um, yeah, so, all right, let's do the quiz. Now, I'm going to give you the rules first, so you know that if you want to participate, it's a very, it's a very easy rules, but because I have to comply with YouTube and everything like that, so I can't just do giveaway, we have to do something in return, right? Uh, so that's why we're going to have a quiz. And the rules are very simple. There's going to be one question and three different answers to choose from. And the first one who writes the right uh, answer and that is this is going to be like one uh, x2 I don't know if you said but you have you also have to to write the um, uh, the actual answer the first word of the actual answer to qualify so and uh, secondly because <laughs> there's no d direct messaging in YouTube anymore so if it in order to, to participate in this uh, you need to be comfortable with uh, when I say that you are the first one who answered uh, the right answer in the chat, uh, please um, write down, if you feel comfortable with this, that's why you have to be comfortable with it in order to do this quiz, uh, to um, share your uh, email address in the comment section. And what I will do, I will just copy it like this and then I will hit delete. So that comment will be gone in just a few seconds but I do want you to uh, give me the, the email address because then I can contact you and we can chat uh, so I can get um, your name and, and where to send the book. Um, hope that makes sense. So the rules are very simple. One question, the first one who answers the correct answer in the chat will uh, be awarded a um, signed copy of my book, Sewing Jeans. And you also have to be comfortable in sharing your email address for a brief moment publicly but as I said I promise to delete it as soon as I possibly can so um, I hope that makes sense <laughs> I'm sorry I have to make it a bit complicated but you know that's how it is I have to make sure that everything is fine and, and uh, correctly done so are you ready for the quiz okay get your um, um, fingers ready now because now you also have, you also have to be right and fast so let me see here uh, are you ready? Okay. So let me see here if I can share this screen here with you guys. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So this is the question. As I said, you have to write the first word in the correct answer in order to be eligible for being the winner. Okay. Let me see if I can make this work. So what is this button style called? Is it called a belly button? A do not button or a Barrett button. So please say in the chat which is the right one and I will keep an eye uh, for the first one. So let's go. Yes, we have a winner. Songbird. Let me see here. I think so. Songbird. Do, 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 do. Yay. Congrats. You were the first one that no, sorry, sorry, Songbird. Oh, you were so fast. I'm sorry if I called you the wrong name. Yes, Kathleen, sorry. The chat was lightning fast. I'm so sorry, uh, Songbird, for calling you because uh, the chat moved so far. But Kathleen was the first one uh, who answered the correct question. So congrats, Kathleen and everyone else. We had so many right answers. Uh, yay! Uh, so congrats, Kathleen. So if you, if you, if you feel comfortable, um, just share your email address here in the, the comment section and I will just uh, copy it and then remove it forever. <laughs> so congrats. Um, yes, this is a do not button. Um, this, you know, because I ring the whole, but I tried to figure out some, um, some, uh, um, shapes that were a little bit similar. So, uh, yay. And we also had um, 
We had a few, I think the, I, I thought that was kind of a little bit of fun. We had some ballot but button as well, but we also, I think ballot button was probably the one of, uh, <laughs> Um, yes, and doing a button, just a fun fact here is that the fact that it's the, um, um, it's actually quite common. If you look at a lot of like higher end ready to wear denim brands, you can see that they actually use the donut button instead of the traditional like flat top button. And you can use them yourself. I have a tutorial for this in my book. There's also, you know, you can get a press machine to get it like really, really nice. Um, And also, unfortunately, we had some people um, that had um, slow internet. So actually, they saw the right answer. In the, the chat was slower than the video. Wow. Let me see here. Uh, let me see here. I haven't seen your, um, your email address here, Kathleen. Uh, of course, now I know your name. So if you feel a little bit uncomfortable about it because you're actually using your real name, you can also email me. Uh, I'm going to show that as well. If you, if you, I totally get that because, as I said, they, they remove the the message system in in um, uh, in YouTube a couple of years ago. So there's no way actually of reaching people on on this uh, platform, unfortunately, unlike a lot of other other platforms. Uh, let me see here. So you can also email me here if you if you're. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh, this is so lightning. Uh, yes, I'm really happy to hear that you enjoyed the quiz. I definitely want to do more of this quiz. I, as I said, I've done it once before. It was super fun, and uh, we can do like this. Um, you know, it would be kind of fun if we did that more like a regular like end of life show thing. Uh, so if you have any suggestions or topic you would love me to quiz about, I am all ears because that would be super fun. Um, so yeah, I'm still waiting for Kathleen here, but you know, as I said, uh, you can also email me here if you want to instead, if you feel that, uh, as I said, also there might be a lag because I'm also using a separate software so I can do all this kind of like banners and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, and there was also so many people that loved uh, hearing the the quiz. Uh, and also someone says it was great first time I watched live. Are you weekly online live? No, I'm I'm doing um one live each month usually, and it's usually the last uh, Sunday on each month. And um, so I will definitely. Uh, schedule it so you can see beforehand you can of course also follow me on uh, social media try to um uh here's, here you find me on instagram for instance uh, i tried to share it there i also share it on my website and in my newsletter uh if you head over to thelostitch.com uh you can get all the sign up stuff there as well if you want to keep uh but usually usually the last sunday of each month um so yeah, so much and thank you so much for everyone who participated in this uh, live. I'm so happy now to finally be back doing them. I really love them. Now it's really late at night here, so I'm, I'm very like high energy. So I'm gonna gonna um, uh, have some problems sleeping. But yes, I have uh, next. I think the topic planned out for the next two live streams. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, so they're gonna be more like this in the format, and it was so amazing. We there were actually over hundred people uh tuning in today which is mind-blowing it was absolutely wonderful and i'm so happy to see that you all uh, came here and uh, hang out with me this uh, sunday evening as it is in sweden and you can also stay tuned i have a lot more um regular sewing videos coming up as well uh including some sewing tips and a little bit about my makes uh, so yeah thank you so much i loved hanging with you and as i said um any suggestions, all that stuff, just drop drop a comment and uh, we'll see if you have any topics, for instance, that you would like me to cover. Uh, I think the next live stream would probably be about cover stitching, uh, but that is subject to change, of course, because, <laughs> you know, I usually go when I'm kind of feeling at the moment, but 
that's probably one of the topics that I'm also, and I'm also going to do, um, I also have a guest, at least one planned, and I'm also trying to persuade another person uh, to also come on the live because I love doing um, uh, Q&As with someone who knows a lot about a particular topic. So that's also something that I, I love. Um, uh, yes, and Kathleen also, she sent me a mail. Thank you so much, Kathleen, they're wonderful. Uh, also, congrats to everyone. Uh, for sticking out with me and also coming back after last Sunday where I messed up everything. Uh, so it meant a lot to me to see that you all came back. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much. Uh, as I say, stitch safe and happy sewing. And we'll see the next live in, uh, it will be uh, September again, right? Because the last Sunday of this uh, month, there will be a new live stream unless something unforeseen happens. So Happy, happy, happy sewing. So nice to talk to you. Bye-bye.